rise and rise again until lambs become lions. <laughs> Finally, hundreds listened, thousands, who took up his call for the rights of all ranks from baron to sir. Rise and rise again until lambs become lions. When you're doing a film like this, and it's set in a historical period, but it's about a legendary figure, mm -hmm. there's some latitude for creation, but I know that, they, uh, for example, Mr. Scott's also a big fan of really getting the details right. Mm -hmm. How do you guys go about building the world, and how involved were you up front in terms of the specific approach to how this character would be handled? Well, we're very involved in that. Um, the building of the world, though, is, is Ridley, and uh, people like Arthur Max, you know? Um, but right from the beginning, our discussions were not how we were going to um, redo the cliches, but you know how we were going to get rid of them, and um, how we're going to recalibrate it, and what period of history it should be, and who is this person? You know, what is this? You know, what plants the seed within him that brings out this altruistic part of his nature? You know, one of the most elastic elements of the story has always been the Robin Marion relationship and how mm -hmm. that's defined and. Um, really the only other version that's dealt with, like, like I think, real grown-ups, but it's at the far end of it, was the Connery Hepburn version. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this is one of the first sort of eyes open, adults dealing with each other versions that I've seen, where it's not a love story in the traditional gooey, meet cute way, but it's, it's really more a matter of these people at a certain point in their lives running into each other. Yeah. Was that something that you specifically wanted to, to show a certain way? Um, yeah, well, you know, um Finding the truth of that romance is very important. Um, finding a way to begin the Marion character where she was at the same time sort of abusive towards Robin yet still remained intriguing to him. You know, that was very important. Um, but also how, how it grows and, and, you know, using Marion as a principal motivation, as a clear motivation for Robin, you know, that altruism we were talking about, you know. It comes down to, in our movie, the two basic points. He's found a chick that he wants to fall in love with, and he wants to respect the legacy of his dad, you know? So his motivation's clear. But having that romance build slowly and not, it's not two people have, you know, love at first sight, tumble into bed. You know, it's not, as you described it, that dewy-eyed teen rom romance thing, you know, uh, with lots of hand-holding and what have you, you know? It's, it's two adults who have experienced, you know, a lot of things in their lives, and they've, they've been to some very negative places and had a lot of pressures put on them. And here it is, in this bleak existence that they have, you know, here is a kindred spirit. Here is a soul that I can connect to. So it has that the depth and reality, I think, and I think that's why people are responding to it. I love the uh, casting of the Merry Men, and I think that they are a great group of guys together. Um, and Alan really is a, an amazing discovery on film. Like, his charisma is so natural. Mm -hmm. It seems like he's made 30 movies when mm -hmm. you're watching him in this. Um, Alan made every mistake an actor can make. <laughs> every mistake from day one, shot one. It was just, he was on such a steep learning curve, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, oh, well, you know, to be more specific, probably about three days in, Ridley put his arm around me and he said, that was a good choice, mate, thanks. It really was. I gotta say, it's a great find and I'm, I'm really happy it worked out that way. Yeah, it's cool. On, on day one, he had to run down a hill, pull an arrow out of his quiver, knock it on his bow, stop, and fire it, right? So they go, action. Oh, I dropped it. <laughs> I dropped it, you know. I dropped the arrow. <laughs> mate, mate, no matter what happens, keep going. Okay? <laughs> go back to the beginning, right? Action. Oh, bloody hell, I've dropped it again. <laughs> That'd be the second one. <laughs> Is that the second take? I, I, I fucked it up, and I? Yeah. I should, I should, I should, mate. Tell you once more, <laughs> after action, no matter what fucking happens, keep fucking going, all right? All of these people here, you know, they're all gonna like you, right? Yeah. But they're only gonna like you if you get your job done. <laughs> they're all waiting to have lunch on you not dropping the arrow. So let's just do one without you. And if you do drop it, draw another one. Draw it until you get right, you know? It's like, okay, cool. On the third take, he does this. Didn't drop it that time. No, ow, ow. <laughs> Wait till the bloke says cut. <laughs>